How is everyone doing today? And in this video, we are going to be talking about the tier list for Zelda Zone Zero. We're going to be making one, placing all the characters in their appropriate spot when it comes to the letter ranking. And we're going to be talking about not only their gameplay, but also their power in the game, their investment value, everything in between that we need to talk about in regards to these characters. And before we get into all that, make sure you leave a like, comment, sub, all that different type of stuff, and let me know what you are most excited for, because today is Zenless release day. So later on tonight, we're going to be playing that game over at twitch.tv slash Rihu. So if you want to come by the stream, make sure to do so. And it is going to come out in the morning for some other time zones as well. I'm just super excited. Overall, really happy that we are finally here for Zenless Zone Zero's release. But let's go ahead and start with the tier list. Now, these tiers, of course, course i do want to preface this really quickly before we get into it even though i put character at s plus s a b does not mean they're bad characters in any way shape or form a lot of these characters are actually really really good for the starting roster these are just going to be the levels of how much power they have when it comes to a character in s plus versus s there's going to be a definite reason why there's one tier higher and one tier below if a character is s and i move some down to a does not mean they're a bad character it just means literally there's just a level difference in power that these characters have that the others below them don't so that's one thing i do want to preface but let's go ahead and start talking about our first character that i do want to put on the tier list because we already know exactly where she's going to be and that's going to be ellen i think ellen is by far one of our strongest ice dps at the current moment and one of our strongest dps period when it comes to not only the amount of damage that she's able to do, she has by far one of the strongest reactions in the game, which is freeze, which makes it so that your enemies are stunned no matter what, which is a very strong thing to have inside Zenless Zone Zero, especially with how much these enemies tend to go crazy on the field when it comes to the later portions of the end game and also levels in the game. I think Ellen by far has some of the craziest synergy with a lot of different characters when it comes to all that's available to her with needing an ice character or a maid faction character and knowing that we get sokaku for free through an in-game event that's already half the team for free then you just need lycan who's also a very busted character by himself which we will talk about later he has so much days build up he has a crap ton of damage when it comes to what he's able to do him and also sokaku just make such a crazy team for ellen not only that because we also have the maid faction to our disposal when it comes to the synergies for her core passive you also have the chance to use rena which rena has pen ra uh, pen ratio penetration or the boost to that which is going to help out ellen do a lot more damage and do a lot more and i think rena is a very future proof character that we're going to see skyrocket as time goes by but ellen overall with how much she's able to do with her innate dodge in her abilities with her being able to have ice infusion almost 100 percent of the time and only that have a massive amount of aoe have the ability to inflict shatter no matter what she does in terms of using a certain move she just has the whole entire kit and a lot of different characters at her disposal when it comes to the energy or when it comes to any of the core passive conditions that you possibly need she has a lot of flexibility between which characters she does need versus some other characters that may have a harder time procking it without certain characters and we'll talk about that later on in the tier list but overall i think without a doubt no one can argue that ellen is by far one of our strongest characters of course as she is the only one right now with a fully built team from having some of the best supports to having some of the easiest conditions to fulfill with a lot of the stronger characters being either an ice character or a maid house character that's the really crazy thing about ellen now going on to the next character i do want to talk about speaking about liking which we were already talking about i think liking is also just a very very strong character when it comes to what he's able to do in regards to basically taking your days meter from zero to 100 and less than a regular combo especially when it comes to the smaller mobs they're instantly days no matter what when it comes to bosses lycan has the potential to be able to fill way more than half of the days meter with just himself not including other external buffs or anything else in regards to any other teammate which you can add on top but lycan just has so much to him when it comes to the days meter which is such a critical resource to be able to know how to build up because once you have your days meter filled up this allows you to get more parry points more assist points which is going to help you so much in the later game when trying to manage when you can parry when to dodge when can i get the days meter off again because if you don't get the days meter off you're not getting a parry gauge back and that's very scary especially for certain attacks that you kind of don't want to try and dodge because it's multi-hitting and probably hits a large area so you're going to get hit regardless that's something you really want to parry but i think lycan especially with being able to gravitate towards ellen a really really strong buff towards him and he doesn't have to be just on ellen's team because he definitely can be on something else in regards to being on the same faction with someone like rena who's also a very freaking strong character no matter what and then overall if you put her on any team or 
liking on any team besides Ellen's. He's just going to be able to help with Days Meter no matter what. That's just the universal resource and the universal power of what he's able to do and how strong he's able to do it. So I do think that Lycan by himself right now, he is such a strong character being able to abuse and also build up that Days Meter an insane amount that he's just going to be absolutely wrecking this game. I cannot wait and hopefully I pull him because I'm very excited. I've played with him in all the CVT3 and also CVT2. It's really, really exciting. Now, going on to the next character, I do want to talk about. I'll just go ahead and talk about Rena because we have been talking about her quite a bit. I do think Rena is at S at the current moment. Now, I only want to put her here for now, only because there's not a lot of different characters at the current moment, unless I get more time with her when it comes to live release. Because I did play her in what's it called? CBT two i think for a very short amount of time while cbt3 i never got her as much so i never really got the chance to use her fully but right now rena has one of the future proof kits out out of all the cast i think out of full cast rena has by far the most future proof because she's able to give so much in regards to defense down which is the pen ratio and also the boost to electric damage but there is one little point of that that makes it a little bit worse for rena at the current moment Looking at Rena and her kit, the pen ratio works on everyone. So any DPS can work with that. And it's a really good thing to have. And something that we know when it comes to not only Star Rail, but also Genshin, defense down is by far some of the craziest stat you can give a character for their damage because that helps it boost a crap ton more than not having it at all. Characters that have been released since the beginning of the game in Honkai Star Rail in version 1.0 are still some of the high meta used pick characters when it comes to them being at the current patch and that is going to be Pella from 1.0 to 2.3 or 2.4 where we're currently at you have her being used no matter what just because she has that defense down with a valuable stat to any team at this point in the game so having someone who's able to do that innately in their kit such as Rina is a very strong thing to have which is a really good thing and not only that she also does really good with anomaly build up just because she hits so much with electricity and not only that you also have the ability to be able to use sub dps type of attacks with rena as well with using your skill switching out and now the enemy is taking a lot of electricity damage while you're doing whatever you want with your dps i think that's a very strong thing for her to have not only with sub dps attribute anomaly and also to be able to support characters with a massive defense down for the enemy is a really really nice thing to see going on to the next character that i do want to talk about right now which this gets harder and harder as i move down the list just because a lot of these characters are subjective and also very conditional depending on what you want to counter them as or what you want to use them as on the team but going to the next character i think zhu yan might be s at the current moment Mainly because Zhu Yan, I don't think right now has as much of a premium team and as much as a synergistic team than someone like Ellen. And I think Lycan is just super freaking nasty with what he's able to do with his days. I think right now Zhu Yan is only S under Ellen. Although I do think she's going to have more future value than Ellen. I just think right now we don't have a lot of teammates that she can benefit from. And especially from what we've seen on the stream, we do know that she's going to get more faction members, which is going to be really nice for her, giving her more viability and also more synergies to work from. But right now, all that we can use with having Zhu Yan on the team is someone like Grace, someone like Nicole, someone like Anby. But I think besides Grace, there's not really a lot of premium synergies that you can give Zhu Yan at the current moment to match the power of someone like Ellen. I do think Zhu Yan is going to be a lot stronger as time goes by. With her having 24-7 DPS, she can dodge while she's doing damage. She has very easy ways to manage her resources in regards to her bullets and her gun. There's a lot of really good stuff that comes from Zhu Yan and just the amount of power that she's able to do with, like I said, the 24-7 damage. You also have a lot, and I mean a lot, of ether damage coming onto the enemy, which makes really quick corruption. And corruption is by far one of the strongest reactions in the game as well. So there's a lot of stuff that's going for Zhu Yan. She just doesn't have the right team right now and the right synergies uh, as much as Ellen, who has Lycan, Rena, and also has Sokaku, who's free. We have a lot of different characters right now, and especially with how some of the strongest characters in the game fit her team, it's kind of hard for Zhu Yan to compete at the current moment when there's not that many characters, not only in her faction, because she's the only one, but you also have characters that are not part of the Ether team as well, because we only have Nicole as well. So that's hurting not only 
Juyan, but also from both aspects. We have no faction members, and not only that, we also have only one Ether unit in the game that is Nicole. Although I do think Nicole is a very strong unit as well, and something that a lot of people should probably invest in in regards to a starter character just because of all that she holds, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. Going on to the next character, and holy crap, this gets harder and harder in my honest opinion. And like I say, I am going to be moving towards the B and C area when it comes to some of these four stars, because I don't want a lot of us to think that this is because they're bad characters. No, it's because I do think there are levels to power when it comes to how strong these characters are. And looking at where I'm going to be putting some of these four stars, I'm definitely going to reserve A for some of the lower tier five stars and maybe some of the better four stars in the game. But going on to the next character when it comes to what we're able to put in for the tier list i do want to go ahead and throw in someone like grace i think grace is also an s plus character just because she has a long-term investment route as well similar to rena i do think as time goes by especially how we've seen the pattern of both not only genshin impact with elemental mastery how big that's been ever since its release same thing with having break effect in Honkai Star Rail. I guess you could say attribute anomaly is going to be in the same vein or the second stat that a lot of people are going to overlook at the start and then realize later on that this is probably the most broken thing we have in the game. And I do think as time goes by, as we get more coordinated attacks or sub DPS characters, as we get more characters that are able to inflict way more elements on top of the enemy, we're going to see characters like Grace rise up, especially with all that she's able to do. Similar to Zhu Yan, she has 24-7 DPS with her having innate movement inside her strings, with her having a lot of AoE, and also because at the beginning of the game, we are fighting a crap ton of robots, Grace is able to shock them very easily, making it so that they are stunned for a very long time, allowing you to do a lot of damage. I do think Grace is going to be a long-term investment for sure, and a character that I think is going to be really, really great in the future. I just hope and see that we see it early on, so a lot of people understand how strong she is in the game, because I know when I was playing with her in CB CBT2 and CBT3, she was a monster. She was plowing through every single enemy. She was able to deal with anything that was in her way. And the movement that she has feels so nice when you're able to dodge stuff while doing damage, similar to Zhu Yan. So these are some really good aspects to have for Grace that allow her to be such a strong five star. Going to the next character, I think would be a pretty nice pick to put them in. I think Soldier 11 is going to be right underneath Rina, Zhu Yan, and also Grace. Soldier 11 is by far a regular DPS. She is just a standard DPS. I think it's a really fun one. Also a really cool one to learn just because the way she interacts with her enemies, I guess you could say, you have to time your normal attacks to be able to get permanent fire infusion on your weapon, which is something you're only supposed to get with your skill and also your ultimate. So realistically enough, when you're playing with Soldier 11, you're basically timed on what you're doing when it comes to doing the rhythm for your normal attacks and getting your fire infusion using your skill where you have that little buff of fire infusion and then using your ultimate where you have that longer buff of fire infusion there's a lot of different ways to play soldier 11 i think she's a really fun character for sure but when it comes to a lot of the characters that are going to be around her in terms of the five stars they have a lot more in regards to what they're able to do for the team especially with characters like grace with anomaly Zhu Yang with how crazy she is and also rena for the supportive factor soldier 11 is just reg a regular five star and a regular dps and there's nothing wrong with that in any way shape or form i still think she's a really great character she's just not on the level of these guys at the very top going on to the next character that i do think is absolutely crazy and i do want to preface this as a higher tier character or higher tier player playing these characters because in regards to a lot of these characters a lot of them you can try and left click but if you pay attention to their mechanics if you pay attention to their move sets a lot of these characters have some really broken stuff and a character that i do want to preface that is someone like nekomata and i do think someone like nekomata I do think she's probably S at the current moment. I don't want to put her in S plus because putting Nekomata and also Ellen in the same tier is a little different just because of how much power you get out of Ellen. But Nekomata being our DPS in the S rank, the reason I put her there is because playing with Nekomata, not only does she have a nice bit of AOE within her strings and also her skill, she also gives a nasty amount of days for a DPS character. And not only that, Nekomana has some of the most absurd movement in this game, not only being able to almost full screen dash towards an enemy, but is also able to immediately gain access to the back of enemies, which she gets bonuses on attacking. So if an enemy is trying to hit you and you dash through them with Nekomana's dash and you on their back, 
the enemy's gonna still hit the other way and you're able to do free damage for as long as they're still doing their attack as long as not a 360 move Nekomata has an absurd amount of movement. Nekomata has a lot of damage. And Nekomata can build up days very quickly by herself. She's kind of the three-in-one package when it comes to having a character in this game. And the amount of time you can build up that physical anomaly, build up that daze, build up the amount of damage you're doing when it comes to hitting them on the back. You get a lot of bonuses for playing Nekomata correctly. And it's definitely a character I think is going to be overlooked and is a very strong character at the current moment, especially with all that she's able to do. I think she's just a freaking good unit when it comes to all that she's able to have in her kit and what she's able to do when someone knows exactly how to play Nekomata. So I do think Nekomata is a tier above Soldier 11 just because she has way more abilities and way more portions to her kit that put her above a regular dps like soldier 11 going to the next character when it comes to them being in the next tier i do want to go ahead and say someone like Coleta. Coleta right now is in the same vein as lycan they do the similar thing where lycan is there for the days build up same with Coleta. Like is doing it for the ice team and then for fire Coleta is doing it for the fire team so the problem with Coleta is that her animations are very very slow and there's nothing wrong with that because you can switch cancel into another ally which allows you to do something else while Coleta is doing 10 backflips to do her one hammer um smash onto the ground which is a really cool thing to see and also being the only character with a synergy with another character which is ben where they have an expanded moveset when you have the two on the team, which I think is a really, really cool thing. I do think at the current moment, Coleta doesn't have enough or characters that are absolutely needed to be able to have her on the team. Everything that Lycan can do, he could do it two times better than Coleta. Coleta is a really nice character when it comes to the AOE part portion of, I guess you could say, fighting enemies and also building up the days, which she's pretty good at as a stun character, of course. But for Lycan to have all that he is, and especially with the factions and also the element he's with, he holds a lot more synergy with a lot of different characters compared to someone like Coleta, where a lot of the Bellabog units at the current moment are Grace, Anton, and also Ben, which aren't really crazy hard hitters by yourself. So you're really wasting one slot trying to give someone like Coleta a little bit more to her kit, which sucks a bit right now until we get either a new fire character that's absolutely busted, or we have a character that is part of the faction that comes in later on that's a little bit stronger and suits Coleta a little bit more. I do think Coleta is a pretty cool character. I just don't think she has enough to meet the standards of the characters on top of her. Going on to the next character that I do want to talk about in regards to right under the five stars are two. I don't know. It's going to be hard. I'm not going to lie to you. I think the character I could put right now to see how it's going to be. I think Billy as of right now. And this is because I played him quite a bit, but... Compared to every character in this game, he just feels so much weaker compared to everyone else. He is the first character in the game to have a ranged playstyle that's not someone like Rina. Now, the gun playstyle is really cool because not only are you able to keep a range from the enemy, which not a lot of characters can do, but you could also make it so that he's in his crouching stance where he's able to keep shooting bullets while your other characters on the field doing damage, which is a really nice thing to have sub DPS with Billy. The one main factor that I do want to test with him on live release, which is going to be really, really strong, is that he is able to stack his chain attack so that he's able to get more damage on his ult, which does a pretty nice AoE. But talking about everything I know so far from CBT2 to CBT3, I just don't think Billy's able to compete with a lot of these DPS at the current moment or a lot of these sub DPSs at the current moment, what he's able to do. It kind of sucks that he's in this position, and I really, really want to try him to see if there's anything in regards to how strong is he actually once I release it? So I think Billy right now is probably gonna be one of the lowest characters on the list just because he just doesn't have a lot in him or any supportive ability to be able to make him stand apart from the rest of the characters. And a character I also wanna put at the current moment at the near the bottom is gonna be someone like Anton. I think Anton is also a really nice character and I feel like max potential Anton might be one of the most absurd DPS in the game right now. But as of early game, as of mid game, he really doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities, especially with him being a master of all, but a, what is it called? <laughs> a jack of all trades, but a master of none, because I feel like he has the DPS. He has the amount that he does his DPS, which helps him with Anomaly. And he has a fair bit of AOE as well when coming from his ultimate and also his skill. But I feel like with all of this being said at the current moment with early game and mid game in mind, 
he doesn't kind of do a lot for the team or does a lot as a dps so he's our only electric dps at the current moment so i feel like he has a very big possibility of getting power crept in the future by another lightning dps as soon as that comes out and then anton gets thrown out which sadly he kind of doesn't fit the role for a sub dps at the current moment just because he wants a lot of field time when he's on the field because he has his drill that can turn into lightning infused weapon and he's supposed to waste his whole entire time doing damage non-stop until you run out of electricity so someone like anton he doesn't fit that sub dps role so this kind of excludes him from more value he is a main dps and he doesn't do as much crazy stuff as a lot of these other characters so he will be right there in c for me going to the next character i do want to go ahead and put someone like corin up there in a I do think Corrin is a crazy character. They've toned her down since CBT2, since CBT3, and she's still absolutely nasty when we played her in CBT3. I can only imagine live release right now if they keep her the same. She's still going to be the same busted character we saw in CBT2 who got nerfed already. So the fact that she's able to do not only a nice amount of damage, she's actually able to raise the attribute anomaly really quickly, daze meter really quickly. She is the queen of physical assault in this game and assault hits super hard. You use your bell saw and you do a fat ton of damage. Oh, guess what? You were uh, dazed. Now I'm gonna trigger assault. Oh, free 50K when I was doing 1Ks before. Free 70K because I was using the buzz saw. She is a nasty character and a character I definitely want to build up when i get my hands on the game just because of how strong she is with her assault and not only that the amount of damage she does the amount of days she gives she has everything similar to nekomata just not with the movement i think corin is going to be such a sleeper pick that not a lot of people are going to look at and a character i think is just absolutely nasty i cannot wait to try her and she's also free from pre-registration rewards so that's going to be very exciting as well going on to the next character in my honest opinion Looking at Ben, I do want to put him next to Billy, but I do feel like he has a little bit more power in regards to what he's able to do for the team when it comes to being a beginner-friendly character. He has shields, and he also has a way to get enemies off of him. He likes being close to the enemy because if you're able to stand an attack from an enemy, you get a parry, which is a really cool thing for him to have. He's the only defense character in the game, so we kind of don't know the role in specific and how it's supposed to work. But in regards to Ben, you really don't have a reason to use them. I don't want to put him next to Billy because I feel like Billy doesn't have a spot in the meta at the current moment, but Ben has some type of use. But if you're a person who doesn't really need to worry about not dodging, who wants to force a parry to happen, I guess there's no reason for you to use Ben either. And he's very subjective to power creep as well. The really big redeeming factor of him is that not only does he do really good in building days, but again, he's also there with Coleta with that expanded moveset if you have the two on the team. So I think that's very important to talk about. It's something to also mention. But other than that, that's pretty much it for Ben at the current moment. Talking about characters like Ambi, Piper, Lucy, Sukaku, and Nicole. I do want to go ahead and put Nicole right here as well. I do think that she is going to be a very strong character. And this is all talking about all the four stars at E0 or Dupe 0, where they have no dupes. They don't have any of their other crazy Eidolons or any of their crazy talents that they have in the game at the current moment. I know when we talk about that, it changes this list a lot. But at the current moment, since it's the very beginning of the game, I do want to give my thoughts in a more free-to-play manner because no one has the game right now no one can get dupes so i want to go ahead and put it to where i think is more reasonable before the game comes out nicole does have a lot of synergy when it comes to what she's able to do in regards to not only helping out juyan but she also can group enemies although not very strong and hopefully they buff it because i feel like nicole in cbt2 and cbt3 even though her ultimate and also I think her skill as well is supposed to pull enemies into her orb, you basically have to be touching the orb already to get sucked in, which kind of sucks for the whole purpose of how Nicole works. She does have a defense reduce, which is a very strong stat, like I said before, and she also has the ether application that something like Juyang would like or in many other characters that want to proc disorder. I do think she's very strong. I think we would be moving her up later on if we talk about dupes, but as of right now, with the mediocre pull radius, with her being okay at uh, the attribute anomaly, with her helping out Juyang later, I think B is right now fine for her when it comes to her power in the game. The next character I want to talk about is Ambi. 
I think Ambi, in my honest opinion, and this tier list isn't realistically ordered, in my honest opinion. It might be, to be honest. <laughs> but right now, Ambi as well. I do think Ambi is a very, very strong character. Very, very good when it comes to building up days as a stun character. And she has a lot more applications that she can be put on different teams because she is lightning, which she shares with Rena. So that's a really good core right there. She can be with Nicole, which is actually a really nice core because not only do you have the faction bonus, but you have Nicole's defense down. You have Nicole's group. Ambi is really good with AoE and does a lot of stun for days build up and whoever your DPS is whether it be a lighting DPS in the future or Zhu Yan or whoever else you want to put on the team that's going to be a really nice solid core because you're building up a lot of days on a bunch of different enemies attribute anomaly from not only Nicole and also Ambi but you have a lot more stuff available to you and she can be put on a lot of different teams which is a really good thing because she's by far one of my favorite characters so I do think Ambi is pretty strong I think she's a little bit stronger than Nicole just because of how many teams she can be put on but right now this is where I'm going to be placing her of course without any dupes or any talents going on to the next one is going to be Sokaku I think for Sokaku she's going to be right there with Corin and also Soldier 11 and also Koleda. The reason I say this is because, again, she has one of the strongest elements in the game at the moment and she's able to raise attack and also with the ice res down as well, which is a very, very strong thing to be given that team. And she can definitely be a hard hitter for many teams in the future, especially with being able to give attack, which is not dependent on what faction or what element you have, but also having the ice res down kind of puts her in a permanent state on many ice teams. Until we eventually get a support that is dedicated for just ice teams. And that kind of puts Sokaku in the back burner for then. But if you don't summon for them, then Sokaku still becomes the next best, which is a really good spot for her to be in. She has not only a nasty amount of anomaly buildup when it comes to her skill, but not only that, she has really good grouping, not because it pulls in, but because her AoE that she's able to do with her skill, the enemies are going to want to attack you, plunge at you, and they're going to get stunned. They're going to get frozen, which is a really good thing. And not only that, your days buildup with Sokaku is very, very strong when they're taking that massive amount of hits from her skill, which is a really good thing for her. So I do think she's also a very, very, very strong character in the game right now, especially since she gets to pair up with Lycan and with Ellen. She just has a permanent state in one of the best teams of the current moment. So I think having Sokaku right there as our supporter and Corin being there as a four star with how nasty she is, I think it's a fair place to put them in all honesty. And I do think right now that this list might be ordered. I do think that this list might actually be ordered. Just the way it looks, so I do agree, Ellen number one, Lycan is absolutely absurd. What he's able to do, so number two, Rena has the most future-proof kit, but doesn't have crazy amount of characters to be able to, I guess you could say, put them in together with. She does have Ellen, which is a really nice thing, but she has no one else in regards to a DPS besides, well, Anton, that's gonna help them out. So you would really need a little bit more, like a electric DPS, that's a five star. And then Rena can easily shoot her way way up to s plus which will be a really cool thing to see juliana doesn't have a crazy amount of teams at the current moment but she has a lot of utility to her grace is really nasty with what she's able to do with anomaly nekomata absurd dps unit at the moment uh soldier 11 standard dps unit koleda a okay stun character Corin being absolutely stupid and what she's able to do with all that she's able to do inside her kit so kaku being one of the crazier attack buffers and also not only that an ice res buffer for someone like ellen which is very very strong ambi Pretty nice, not the craziest kid in the world, but is able to help out a lot of different teams with how good she is with her days. Nicole, scarcity of her element, but she's kind of tied to a certain amount of teams, which is just Zhu Yan and a uh, Cunning Hair style team, just because of her faction bonus and her element bonus, because we don't have that many of each. And then Anton, middle of the road DPS, Ben, not really needed. Going on to the next characters, Miyabi, of course, S+. Plus, we all know. <laughs> I really don't know where Miyabi's at. Hopefully, she's 1.1, but we can't really rate her because we don't have anything in regards to her updated kit. We don't have anything in regards to testing just because she was only here in CBT1. Going on to someone like Piper and Lucy. I do think Piper and Lucy are going to be a tier above a lot of these other characters just because of what we know so far about their kit. Lucy's able to give it an attack buff and also has sub DPS potential with her hogs being able to take some of her damage and put it into them so they can do damage while someone else is doing something in regards to damage. I think Lucy's going to be very strong. So I could definitely see Lucy over here in the A right here at the end. And then Piper, I'm going to actually put her in front of Lucy because she actually has a better stat and able to trigger her physical anomaly, which is very, very strong. So I do want to say something like Piper with having, I guess you could say, the damage boost that she has in the kit innately, with her having high amount of physical anomaly, which we know, 
And I'm saying that I think Attribute Anomaly is going to be such a broken stat as time goes by. I think it's going to be really, really good for the game when we look into that and when I showcase that off, which I will in a video in the future. And then Lucy, she gives an attack buff, which is really nice, but not as monumental as that damage buff. She is a fire character, so you can slot that in with Soldier 11, with Ben, with Coleta, so that's pretty cool. Or you can have both these characters together. I just think the damage boost and also the physical anomaly is going to push Piper into a different status compared to Lucy, but I do think Lucy is going to be very strong. I think right now, this is what I would say would be my tier list in regards to what I see for a lot of these characters in the game right now. I think realistically, a lot of these placings can change really quickly. Depending on what we find on live release, depending on what we see in regards to the kits we know of, as soon as we go into live release, a lot of this list could change. I do think everyone right now was rated appropriately and what they could do and what they can do. I just think that some of these guys, and like I said, characters in B are still crazy good characters. There's just a right now power level difference between the characters above them, which is why they get put a tier down. That's how I see these tier lists. I don't really equate it to the letter, but this is the easiest way for people to understand how that works. I just think as you go down, the characters at the very top are the ones that have everything that they possibly need or absurd in their own way. The characters at the bottom are missing some type of quality or don't have that value yet. The characters that are at the bottom of them, they're starting to be in the middle of the road. Below them, they have okay properties, not really used in a crazy amount of teams, but are really usable in those teams, but don't have the highest efficiency in what they're able to do or have a slight bit of problems. C, they're okay. They can be used. They don't have the best of the best in regards to what they need to be done for. And then D, I don't see anyone playing them right now. Maybe they'll change on live release. But other than that, that's going to be it for my tier list when it comes to Zone Zone Zero. I have played CBT2. I have played CBT3. And I'm very excited to play live release, which I can look at all these characters again and see what they're able to do. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll wait to the video. See y'all guys in the next one. And peace.